love it or hate it, the Modern Warfare franchise definitely changed the game. The game that started it all, Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare from 2007, is being remastered and re-released. It's time to go back and look at just what was so impactful about this first-person shooter. Compared to its competitors, Call of Duty was a single-player focused series. While not so much in terms of a complete narrative, it dropped you in the shoes of various soldiers in World War II, taking you to places like the Cliffs of France during the D-Day invasion, Stalingrad, and even Germany, you were given context to your objectives. Most of the story came in the way of journal entries during loading screens and some set-piece moments during gameplay. Call of Duty 4 stepped things up in the narrative department. This time there was a full-blown story, and while it was a bit convoluted, it was certainly intense and interesting. It took place in a fictional 2011 where Russia was embroiled in a civil war between the government and Russian ultranationalists who aimed to restore Russia back to what they saw as the Soviet-era glory. The leader of the latter group has teamed up with a Middle Eastern extremist and seized control of an unnamed country that is essentially Afghanistan and Iraq mashed into one. You play as a new recruit into the British SAS called SOAP, as well as several American soldiers. Your time is split between fighting Russian nationalists and Middle Eastern extremists, eventually ending with the team up of the two groups to take down the Russian nationalists once and for all. Of course, there's some twists and turns along the way to spice things up, including one of the biggest shockers in modern gaming. Everyone, hey! The story is again interesting at the very least, and keeps pushing you along. Its only real downside is the pitiful length of the campaign that throws off the pacing and makes the story feel a bit rushed at times. Thankfully, while the story's pacing leaves a lot to be desired, the actual gameplay is paced just right. It's extremely fast-paced, throwing you from one situation to the next. One second, you're fighting through towns in the Middle Eastern capital city, and the next, you're in the mountains of Russia. You go from being on foot to operating the gun of a helicopter and back again. There's intense missions full of action, and there's slower paced self missions. It's enough where no single part overstays its welcome. The campaign, however, does have a lot of issues. The AI is almost non-existent. Enemies generally follow predictable patterns. While they do take cover and will move, they rarely seem like an actual tactical threat. The challenge comes from their ability to pinpoint you and only you, and somehow fire more rapidly than you could ever hope to. Your team AI fares about the same. They will target enemies and take down a few, but ultimately are useless. On top of that, the enemies will endlessly respawn, as well as always spawn in the exact same locations every single time. Higher difficulties only make these issues worse. Thankfully, it does get the job done, and endlessly spawning enemies keep pushing you forward as the game intends. It's just something that makes replays feel tedious. One of the things Call of Duty 4 nails is the actual shooting. Guns all feel unique and as expected. Headshots land with a nice splat of red blood, and hits register as they should. It feels smooth and it feels solid. The game definitely likes higher frame rates, and at 60 frames per second or higher on the PC, it feels buttery smooth. Above all else, Infinity Ward had to nail one thing, and they did that with great success even if the single player's replayability leaves a little bit to be desired. That said, if you bought Call of Duty 4 for the replay value of its single player campaign, you definitely bought the wrong game. The staying power of the game is mostly in its multiplayer. The multiplayer took features that had been seen before and wrapped them into a neat package. While it held the standard assortment of deathmatch and team-based multiplayer modes, it was not lacking in variety. Most of the replay value was squeezed from the leveling and experience system, which allow you to unlock perks like added health or faster reloading, as well as guns and attachments for those guns. The multiplayer was definitely fast-paced and frantic. For the series, it was a huge step up over their previous games. On the consoles, it was also extremely fresh and one of the first multiplayer first-person shooter games besides Halo to really capture the market. It did, however, see the normal issue of hackers and people using glitches to their advantage, and at times this could make the game frustrating and almost unplayable. This is a shot. Target down. I think you blew off his arm. Shock and blood loss will break the enemy. The game was praised upon its release for having stunning visuals. 
Unfortunately, while the set pieces are definitely stunning at times, the actual tech leaves a lot to be desired. Textures are low res and often muddy, geometry is very sharp and jagged, and the lighting is static as well as being hit or miss. On the consoles, it ran at a low sub 720p resolution in order to target a 60 frame per second frame rate. On the PC, even at higher resolutions and higher settings, the problems with the graphics are still present. Victor. Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare changed gaming and in particular first person shooters, and its influence is still being felt even to this day. It's long overdue for a remaster, and Infinity Ward, although no longer the same team that worked on the original, are set to deliver. It'll be interesting to see how the improvements made with Modern Warfare 2 and 3 will translate to Call of Duty 4. No matter what, the update to the game is very welcome.